Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The highly anticipated game with the release date of the 29th of February 2024 has a lot of features that are keeping dedicated fans of the trilogy on their toes. In this video, we're going to be going a deep dive through what we know so far, containing gameplay elements, visiting locations, and all means of travel within the game. To never miss your update on Rebirth, make sure to click that subscribe button, turn your notifications on so you're always aware when the next video drops. But enough said, let's get this started by talking about the playable characters. In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we have the same cast of players from Remake, including Cloud Strife, Diva Lockhart, Barrett Wallace, and Aerith Gainsborough. At the end of the game, Red 13 is showcased as an AI-controlled companion. However, fans from Final Fantasy VII will be glad to know that he'll be fully controllable within the very start of Rebirth, with his very own unique playstyle. Once we have completed the baby steps of the game and make our way to Junon, that is where we will meet Yuffie Kisaragi, the main protagonist of Final Fantasy VII Remake's DLC, Intermission. She will also bring a unique playstyle, being both a physical and a ranged unit, being able to exploit enemy weaknesses through her many ninjutsu abilities. We also know that Zack Fair will be a big part of Rebirth's storyline, which gives the potential to control him throughout certain times of the game. Developer at Square, Shisunori Kitase, stated, We see at the end of Remake that he has appeared, which, you know, is quite a difference from the original title. And as for Rebirth, there will be a new episode with Zack that will contain even more of him than the remake. I'm not able to say much more than this as I would like for players to play and experience this with it in their own hands. With him saying episode, this highlights to me that the DLC expansion will be based on Zack Fair's character to showcase other characteristics of him that isn't directly shown in the main game. This could be wrong cover and we will have to wait and see until the main game comes out. Carrying on with the playable characters, we have also seen Kate Sith with its combat being very different to what we've seen already. Kate Sith has the ability to battle on top of the Fat Moogle or individually, making it more agile around the battlefield. We see a synergy attack with Aerith and Kate Sith looking similar to Aerith's Ray of Judgment ability in the remake, showing how good looking the synergy abilities will eventually look. The final playable character that has been revealed to us is Sephiroth, who shows off his immense strength from Party with Cloud. We haven't been given too much information on this, however, we do know that during the flashback sequence is when we get to control him in battle. Later on in the game, we will be introduced to Vincent Valentine and Sid Highwind. Just like Red 13 in Remake, these party members will be AI controlled, however seeing them in action will uncertainly be a treat for the biggest fans of the game. We have not seen these people in any battles through trailers however, so their abilities and uses are still a mystery to most of the fan base. The locations we visit is everywhere we usually would once leaving Midgar in the original Final Fantasy VII. The only place we do not get access to will be Wutai, which is Yuffie's hometown. This has been directly confirmed by one of the devs at Square Enix, who said, for example, Wutai, one of the major locations, is not a part of the route in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and will be visited in the next one, which is in reference to the third part of the trilogy. The locations that you're able to visit include Calm, Mithril Mines, Chogwo Farm, Junon, Nibelheim, Cosmo Canyon, The Gold Saucer, Costa del Sol, and Gungaga. Since this game is going to be open world, these locations can be visited at any point once you have met the story progression requirement, giving the player complete control on the route that they can take just like in the original game. Lastly, we have been shown multiple ways for us to explore the open world, whether that is by chocobo to fly, climb and travel, or by the buggy vehicle unlocked a little later on. This will speed up the travel time significantly, allowing players to reach the destinations even quicker to fully immerse themselves within the world of Final Fantasy VII. But all in all, that is all I wanted to talk about today. So, if you found this video interesting, make sure to press that like button, subscribe for more Final Fantasy VII content, and enable notifications so you know when my next video comes out. With the demo on the horizon, I will also do dedicated videos in relation to it, and I'm sure that you would not want to miss that. Without further ado, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.